All right, all right. What is going on, beautiful people? It is a Tuesday night. Charles Jackson here with Charles Jackson Media, and I am so pumped to be going live tonight. I get asked all the time about my YouTube and my video, my streaming setup, about the cameras I'm using, about the lighting, about the background, about how to pull it all together. Are you going off the top, Charles, or are you reading through a teleprompter? How do you do it? The setup is dope. You sound good. And you want to take your particular streaming setup to the next level. That is why I'm here tonight. I'm bringing in some heavy hitters. Gentlemen that I've been rapping with uh, for several months now, but just last week we came together and si decided to sit down for a conversation about all things media. You see the title, if you saw the post, Stream Kings. <laughs> I, just, I hope they, we share the story about how that came about because that in itself has been a story and it's all been about collaboration. And so even though people have hit me up personally, I didn't just decide to jump on here by myself and tell you all of what I know. I decided to make it a collaborative effort because if we can come together, you know, I'm all about relationships. We can do better. We can go faster. We can go stronger. And we can have a wider reach and make a better impact because we don't know it all. And I don't know it all. So I definitely want to go ahead and not delay this any further. I want to bring my guests on, tell you who they are, what they do. Guys, welcome to the show, man. What is up? Man, Yo, we live. Invite, brother. <laughs> no, we yeah. live. We say it again, Alicia. Yeah. We live. <laughs> we live. <laughs> man, I, I feel like a little kid that was getting ready for like, you know, uh, this big, big day of going out and hanging with the fellas or something. Because um, you gentlemen have all, in some type of way, impacted my life over the last couple months, and I'm honored, really, to be sitting down having this conversation with you, because. Even though I have folks hitting me up, believe it or not, I drop y'all names all the time and let them know where I'm learning and how I'm growing and how I'm taking my setup to the next level. So I'm privileged to be able to sit down with you. So thank you all for joining me tonight. And I want to allow you all to kind of introduce yourselves. And so I'll kind of start at the top. I see Jermaine up here to my top. So we'll start with you, brother. All right. What's going on, everyone? My name is uh, Jay Freeman, better known as the Marketing You Coach. I uh, specialize in helping you expand your reach and grow your revenue through the power of social media. And um, I'm excited to get in this tonight about live streaming and helping some people level up this week. Appreciate you being here, my brother. Let's go Sir. with you, DJ Strick. I am a new friend of Jermaine, so I'm happy about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we we, we on each other's Facebook friends list, so I, I'm cool today. <laughs> but my name is Strick, and uh, I do a show uh, called Strick City, where I kind of highlight some people out of my area. And also, I'm one of the stream guys from the stream show, and we help streamers succeed. So I uh, really kind of got into helping people do what I do better. So I appreciate the invite. And man, I, I, you know, I just love the panel. Like, these are some real heavy hitters right here. So thanks for the invite again. Yes, sir. Let's go down to my man, Walt. Walt with what's going on party people you know <laughs> for those of you who do not know my name is walter i call myself gibraltar the talker because that's all i do is run my mouth but um i love just helping everybody know my, knows my mantra create inspire and solve in case you don't you're hearing it here for the first time and that's really i just want to help you um build a stronger brand you know you know, expand your business and help you create a community um, around the things you're most passionate about. And I just happen to do that through tech. So uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Appreciate you, my brother. Last oh, sure. but not least, my man, Alicia <laughs> Way, the yeah. way. Yeah. Every time I see your yeah. name, I think about, I always say the way, the truth, and the light every time. Bro. Oh, just, man. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I love Facts. it. Look at that shirt. Yeah, Look at that shirt. <laughs> All spray proceed. Now, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah. I appreciate the love. Yeah, it's it's funny story. So my last name is Way, and um, it was funny after I became an adult, I, I met some other people. And it's, how's my audio? Am I peaking? Am I too loud here? No, oh, you sure. Okay. Sound good. Okay, okay cool. Sound good, 
All right, great. So um, I, I met this older gentleman and he was like, your last name is Way. And uh, he said, do you know that the early the early followers of Jesus, they didn't call themselves Christians. They called themselves followers of the way. And I said, mm-hmm. oh, I, I, did, I didn't know that. So, wow. um, you know, <laughs> so when uh, I, I kind of came into that knowledge, I said, let me take my last name a little bit more serious. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Alicia Way, born and raised Orlando, Florida. I'm actually living right in Winter Haven between uh, Tampa and Orlando. My wife is from um, Tampa. I'm from Orlando. So we settled right in, in the middle. And uh, yeah, I have a, a newly rebranded YouTube channel uh, called Content Ecosystem. It's all about content creation and monetization. And we do that through uh, equipping, empowering, and evolving in our content creation strategies and uh, just our, our content monetization strategies. Because I'm real big on monetizing our intellectual property. I just, I truly believe that God gives us all our stroke of genius and we should be using that in a way that we can cycle back um, income and legacy through uh, the, the knowledge that God has given us all. Um, so that's me. At least away. <laughs> yeah. Let's so as you go. can see, we got so much diversity, right? <laughs> you, <laughs> not okay, okay. We're all brothers, but outside of that, our backgrounds in terms of what we do, but it all goes back to creating content and bringing value to folks um, through live streams, through video, and right. And so that was that common connector in the groups that we are all in. And so as I was sitting down and I was thinking about this conversation tonight. I wanted us to be able to, yeah, talk tech, right, and help with lighting, maybe, you know, throw tips out there. But I also wanted the folks to get to know you guys because I've had the opportunity to get to know you. And you are some amazing gentlemen who are givers, like have been giving people so much of your time. And I just don't want that. And I know it's not, but I don't want it to be something that you feel like is in vain, right? Like what I'm doing is I'm benefiting from you guys. And I think the more people can connect with you, more people can hear your story, what you do, look, it's just going to help us all continue to grow. And so that's what I want to do tonight. So through this conversation, I want you guys to go ahead and start sharing, throwing some comments, some questions down for these gentlemen. We're going to talk through some things here. We're going to laugh. We're going to have a good time. Instead of ladies night, it's going to be gentlemen's night out. So (laughs) no shade, no shade. Right. No shade. (laughs) It's our turn now. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> Where the girls at? Let them know it's our turn. We should have tagged them. The gang is in nah, here. They good. I, lo- I love what they're doing. They're, they're killing it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but so, no, real quick, Charles, yeah, introduce yourself, man. Introduce Because I, I shared the stream to my community, so a lot of them don't really know you. So yeah, introduce yourself, so, brother. So did I. So did I. So I wanted people to get to know you as well. Absolutely. So I appreciate that. So again, my name is Charles Jackson. Um, I am a Marine. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a content creator. I lead Charles Jackson Media, which is a consultancy. We connect people, purpose, and passion. I am on a mission to help people build healthier relationships because I believe relationships are the foundation of everything that we do. So like you guys, I've been doing the Facebook Lives for about six, seven years, you know, just delivering relational leadership and I'm doing marriage coaching and marriage mentoring. And that's been going on probably for a total of 10 years, but just the live streaming part for the last seven years. And I've had the opportunity, man, to just connect with individuals like you along the way who've helped me take Charles Jackson Media in terms of my online presence with videos and live streams, pre-recorded, and even the podcast to the next level. And so I am all about relationships. That's why, again, this chat that we're getting ready to have is super cool because you guys all mean something to me and have added value to my life. So that's who I am. In a nutshell, that's what's up. Look. Shout out, we got we got Lim Dog in the comments. What's up, brother? Lim drops in the comments. Lim, Lim drops. Yeah, got James <laughs> Riley dog. in the yeah. comments. Yeah, yes, sir. That's what's up, man? Yeah, James, awesome panel tonight. I agree. Semper Fi Cordell. So I want to. So this first question, first of all, let folks get a little bit of the background because, like I say. I had a conversation with Alicia. I said, hey, I'm going to do a live. Um, I'd love for you to join me. He's like, all right, bet. And and Jermaine was in that same feed. I think he was like, hey, don't leave me out. <laughs> and then Walt Dog came and chimed in. He was like, hey, throw me in there too, right? And then DJ Strick came and was like, well, okay. Do I not rate to be in this group or what? I've been doing this for 20 years. You need my voice and my radio personality up in there. Yeah. And we- <laughs> And so I I thought it was cool, man. I wanted to hang out. Like, really? (laughs) Exactly. 
So we created right a um, a group on Messenger, Facebook Messenger, and and started co- the collab, and that's how we got here. But what I want folks to know is everybody was bringing something to the table, right? I work audio, I work on graphics. What about a name? You know, time, and just it wasn't like we just sat down and hit a button and all of this happened with these cool overlays and all of that. So, Walt, because you designed the overlay, and I think it was you, Jermaine, that was like throwing around ideas about the name. Talk about the name first, and then Walt, talk about that overlay design so folks can kind of see that part of how all of this stuff comes together. Right, right. I think Elicio was the first one that threw out uh, <laughs> where he actually had the, uh, the name. It all came from uh, the Kings of Comedy. Yeah, yeah. Talk- <laughs> we were talking about there would be no other collab like the Kings of Comedy. They go down in history, the greatest ever, right? right and, um, and then so we we started just throwing things around, and um, I think he said the Kings of some. I can't remember exactly what it was, and then we came back and um, I said, well, what about the Kings of Streams? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the final iteration is uh, Stream Kings. Uh, well, he he overrode both me and Alicio. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's that's what you can do when you're making the graphics. You can you got to last say so. We ain't we ain't, we ain't just gonna we're not gonna just skip over how Walt slapped these graphics together in literally <laughs> oh ten minutes God. before the show, right before the show, right before the show. I'm like, it was nice, with these graphics, man. <laughs> but was acting like it was nothing. Like, oh nothing. yeah, what you guys think of these? I just threw these together, and I was like, okay, it together. Okay. Okay, okay, let's let's get let's 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 get something straight. So first of all, I didn't override nobody, but not real talk. It was like I was I, I was cool with the whole um the king of stream, but then like when I was designing and I was like stream kings just it was quick, you know, I it like stream right. yard EM. It was like stream king. So I was like, it just visually to me um it stick you know it stuck better it was quicker to remember it was easy to repeat um mm. and it was going to be controversial and quickly offensive <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, no but I, I i love that you went that that route um um walt because i was talking with the um um the onyx family and they were talking about branding and they were just talking about exactly. just that they were saying they were saying that a lot of people over brand and with mm-hmm. their name and he said they were saying that a lot if you look at the biggest brands apple nike you know they kind of one syllable two syllable name so just your genius of being able to notice that and recognize that and be like hold on king of the stream stream of the kings and all that and you're like no stream kings and just put that together that really speaks to your 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 genius uh as far as branding yeah Absolutely. man and that was the biggest that that was the biggest thing because even um like the only reason I was able to do this so quick is because of like the whole the whole thumbnail thing. So, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, um, talk about designing thumbnails and all those different types of things. And so like that's something I've been doing a whole lot more this year as of late. So it's like I already had a pattern in my mind. I'm like, OK, thumbnail, that's simple. Well, we can't just go thumbnail. We got to go the whole stream. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, shout out to Photoshop because it's like, oh, I can just artboard everything. And it's a matter right. of duplicate and copy and paste. And then you're going to get a seamless look. You know what I'm saying? So when people see the thumbnail and then when they jump in the stream, it's like the color is going to be the same. The elements going to be the same. The conversation, right. the synergy, everything has to be aligned. And like Alicia was saying, I think a lot of people overlook. Um, we get so caught up on the gear and we get so caught up on the tech that we overlook the overall brand. We overlook the overall content because I'm like, I don't care how much tech you got and this is no shade to anybody but we know tons of people whether random or personally that have thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear but if the conversation is not something that's captivating if people don't stop scrolling you know and be like what are they talking about like the stream kings you know what i'm Mm -hmm, saying it's mm -hmm. like it's like people gonna be like oh they ain't talking about nothing let's keep rolling Right. You know what I'm saying? So you just don't have to visually. You just can't brand yourself. You just can't go out here and buy all this gear. But it's like you got to make sure you brand your content. I was joking with Jermaine. I'm like when he shared the flyer, yeah, I looked at his copy and I was like, dang, all I did was say jump in. We started nine. He done roll. I'm like, 
He's me selling too, a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, but that goes back to that that copy that sells where it's mm-hmm. like, no, we, we take this seriously. So it's like, I'm not just going to throw this up here because it looks good. It's like, wow. you know, there's valuable information I want you mm-hmm. to get. So that, that, that was my whole approach with it. Absolutely. I think I think too. A lot of people, everybody and their baby daddy and grandma, auntie, mama, sister, cousin, cousin is streaming now. So I just Everywhere. I just I love to say that you have to have a scroll stopping appearance, you know. And and a lot of times when I see people streaming, when they don't have any branding or any color palette or any type of layout to their stream, they don't realize that they're just people just scrolling past their thing, their their stream. But when they see like branding, they see colors, they see something standing off from the typical blue and red, you know, um, Facebook color palette then it makes them just automatically do what's going on they just stop mm-hmm. so i mean it's 31 people in here right now watching i'm pretty sure a lot of them are like what, what you know what's going on you know mm-hmm. it looks good what are they talking about so absolutely that's a great point right. man so we talked about that sort of visual art artwork right let's talk about because jermaine <laughs> he had that copy that sales copy to go with it to pull people in so like let, let's bring that together what was that about jermaine <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know, you kind of you kind of set it off right um, with your copy, and um, I'm always like that because I'm a, I'm a branding guy, consulting guy, marketing, and so you know we know that it's all about your copy. It's all mm-hmm. about you know, the way that you present your product or service, um, and so it's really key. Like Walt was saying, like, hey, you take it serious, no matter what your post is. I always tell people, you know, don't just post to be posting, post with intention, right? Fact. And so you want to always yeah. make sure that you post. Uh, they have a call to action. You want to that, that call to action could be just follow us at 9 p.m. tonight. You know right. what I mean? And right. getting them to the stream. Uh, but every post should have a call to action, you know, and just knowing those different keys, uh, even with our live streams. All of that's important uh, to really get your audience to begin to follow you um, at w- in whatever platform you may be in. So whether that's Facebook, whether that's YouTube, whether that's IG and you're doing stories or, or lives there. Uh, you just want to make sure that you can speak the story and that your story can pull people into your actual environment. That's dope. So just so we're not, cause I, we got folks here who, you know, we were invited through our copy, maybe new to the streaming world. What is copy when we say copy, right? Cause it, I had to learn that too, back in the day. I actually work now with a copywriter and all of that stuff. But when she would say, Hey, I'm sending you the copy for the website. I was like, you, I need to copy what? I'm, I was in the Marine Corps, so I'm like, yeah, copy that. Copy that. She was like, no, right, I don't need right, to know right. if you understand. So <laughs> let, her, let, her, let her know what copy yeah. is. Copy that. So, <laughs> yeah, we can copy that, right? So the copy is, um, and it's funny because I've, I've had this happen with clients uh, when we're doing their web designs and all that. And we say, well, we need the copy for the site. And it was like, copy for the site where you guys are creating the design. It's like, no, mm. we need the verb. We need the language, you know, how are you going to uh, lay that out? You know, and it's it's wow. uh, an art form to copy. So copy is really the verbiage, the words that you're using to convey your messaging. Right. It's the messaging that you use. Um, and it's vitally important. It's vitally important. Um, I've seen pages that had amazing graphics. Right. And had terrible copy um, and they just wow. did not convert. And I've seen big pages that had terrible copy or I mean, I'm sorry, terrible graphics or just plain white and black pages. And the co- the copy was amazing. And yep. they converted like gangbusters. Right. Because wow. I'm telling a story I'm telling. And a lot of people don't know how to even convey their own story. So that's why I think it's important. Like you said, you're working with a copywriter now. Um, if you don't have the time to learn uh, effective copywriting then, you know, you got to find somebody that can convey your story. You give them the main points of Mm -hmm. who you are, even in your biography, right? Give them the main points of who you are and allow them to really captivate your audience, you know, with the copy and everything. We were just having this conversation. I think it was last week, wasn't it? Um, Well, when you um, you were talking about the book that you were actually reading, uh, I think it was Copy That Sells or something like that. Copy Copy That Sells, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I was talking about um, Oglesby. Uh, being the you know the number one copywriter ever, and really to study his stuff, but it's it's a, at a point where you have to study this. And guess what? You don't have to study it so you can become a copywriter, but at least study it to a point where you can get your message across and you understand the key theory behind writing copy. 
Right. You know, that's really yeah. important. Yeah. So, something out of what you said, I want to make a point of. You said if you don't okay. know how to do it, it'll, it'll behoove you or it'd be a great idea for you to find somebody that does. And I want to say this to everybody, because as we talk about streaming, as we're talking about making content, whether it's uh, the words that you're writing, the elements that the overlays that you see, the graphics that you see, or even it, the concepts of um, presenting to people online, like you really have to find people that will help you along the way. Don't like Listen. I have so many people that say, Hey, I'm gonna figure this out. Listen, there's some things that we could tell you that'll give you pieces, little bitty pieces to the puzzle that could definitely shoot you to the moon in seconds versus you trying to go through this over a year. And mm -hmm. oh, I wish I would I saw them do this. I didn't know mm -hmm. how, but you never asked and you never took right. a program, you never paid right. a consultant. We're all here. Everybody on this screen is here that can help people uh, level up their lives. And, you know, however you're presenting yourself, we can help you through that process. What you were saying something. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, what I, I thought you were saying something while I was talking, and then I know you oh, wanted to kind of jump in. I wanted to give oh, it to no, you. No, 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 no. You good? I, I was shaking my head. I was agreeing with you, but nah. Um, I, I, I think that is what what you said is is a, is is a thing for me this year. As far as um, we have a lot of people that are hell bent on like trying to prove to themselves and like the people around them that they can do it, and hmm. I'm like, yo, you will find yourself stuck for like the next ten years. Um, I'm guilty of that. And and so one of the things Ooh. I've been saying like the past two years is like collaboration is mm -hmm. the new currency. And wow. so, you, you know, e each one of us could have got up here and done our own separate stream. Mm -hmm. But what does it look like, you know, for us to say, yo, let's come together. You know what I'm saying? And 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 let's, you know, put our strengths together. Let's even bring our weaknesses to the table and let's and wow. let's really show the people what this looks like. Um, wow. you know, and, and I'm going to say it because I don't know if it's because of the pandemic, a lot of people aren't talking about it, but just even from a cultural standpoint, that that's another, that's a hidden gem behind Kings, you know, because it is black history month and, um, and just having men come, Take it down. Black, Take it down, black, Walt. Men, black men coming together to say, yo, same. I can put, I can put my ego aside. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if it was intentional. We all happen to be wearing black t-shirts tonight. And right. so, <laughs> so, and again, I don't know. Some people get like nervous when we start talking about race. I don't know. Cause it's really, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go that way, but it's, is be, be the king and, and be the queen, you know, of, and be, be king and queen enough to not be intimidated by somebody else's greatness. It's Ooh. like it, you you have to be so strong and secure in yourself to be like, I don't care what, you know, Charles is dope. Strick is dope. Jermaine is dope. Alicia is dope. But it doesn't make me any less than a king. Walter is dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> like what what makes me a king, what makes me a queen is the fact that I can wow. put my agenda aside and come together and say, man, one can put a thousand to flight. Two can come put on, ten thousand to flight. It's five on, people preacher. on this screen. I can't come do that preacher. math, you know. So, you know, so come on, and, and so, so That's you know, 50, a lot of people, 000, brother. right? A lot, a lot of people want help. You know what I'm saying? But they want help to be able to do it by themselves. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, wow. I'm like, no, you want help because you want credit. It's like I can give come you on, the help. Ooh. You're still gonna, you're still gonna struggle. You know. Ooh. And so, so ten, tonight we just wanted to oh. prove a point. No, we well, that's my that's my story. Thing. That's my <laughs> wow. that's my story, man. Like if you know anything about uh what happened in the pandemic, uh it was one night like one of our one of our guys on the stream tonight was kind of fumbling through and testing online and uh he says, "Man, somebody want to jump on and kind of help me out, you know, while I do this." And I said, "Hey, I got mm -hmm. some free time. Let me jump on and help out Alicia Way." He didn't need any help, but he was just trying to test some stuff. Oh, no, I, I, I need man, help, brother. That, <laughs> that that one night catapulted like to a two-hour stream with I don't know eight people on us talking. It was, it was four hours. It was four hours. 
and it was crazy. Right. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and and it hasn't stopped for me, Alicio. It hadn't stopped for you either. Like, we're still streaming. God is still blessing what we're doing. And, uh, man, Alicio just had on some uh, one of the biggest uh, family a YouTube channel, uh, what you want to call them, you, creators, YouTube yeah. creators, and uh, yeah. man, it's amazing with uh, what's happened since. What, what was that like? April, May? Man, no, it wasn't that far back. No, I did my it first that stream. Far back? I did my first stream that in, in, in uh, it was it was it was the um, it was uh, Thanksgiving Eve, brother. It was Thanksgiving I got you. Eve. I got you. Yeah, I yeah, started. I, remember... I started in April, and then I didn't oh, really okay. get into the group until then that's that's oh, what yeah, it was yeah gosh yeah i did my first live stream thanksgiving eve because i remember i went to the ecam group gave away some free overlays and then i had the overlays and didn't know how to work the overlay so i went on my personal page and was trying to figure out how to do the overlays and put the camera overlays in them and then you jumped on and then yeah i mean i've actually I, the first interview mode i did with with uh, brant collins he needed help and i jumped on the stream with him um in the ecam group so yeah it's just everybody helping everybody man yeah and that's how it is even even this collaboration here you know when i look back it was actually uh the video that i had did the simulcast when i had recorded the live video and did the broadcast audio the clubhouse and that's how we all got on that thread and that that comment thread is yep. like <laughs> deep <laughs> yo oh and, that, and, that is that is yep. you yo that that you Yep, because I was like, I said, yo, because Charles was commenting and stuff, and I was like, hold up, pause. Don't right. let him fool y'all like his <laughs> right. content ain't dope. Because I had a conversation with Charles, and I was like, bro, yo, set up. Like, you you, you in the wrong industry, bro. Like, you need to be sharing some <laughs> tips and tricks. Like, this joint is fire. And so I was Man. like, hey, nah, don't let him slip through the cracks. And then that that's just how, that's kind of how it blossomed. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? And that's and so we can talk about that because I'll be honest, uh, when I first started, man, I was I was all over the place and because I was going to YouTube, I'm watching all these guys set up and you know they've been doing it 15, 20 years, but I don't know that. And so now I'm I'm kind of comparing myself and I'm striving to try and get this look. I don't have so many setups, spent so much money. My wife would tell you, I got like a audio video graveyard over here of stuff that I just don't use that I bought within a very short period of time. Like I said, I started Facebook Live about six, seven years ago, but I was, anytime I watched a YouTube video and somebody recommended something, I was out and I was getting it, you know, dropping in the Amazon card, lights, audio, and I went through that for several years. Well, you was blessing somebody affiliation. It's what I was doing. I was, <laughs> I was pumping up somebody else's <laughs> affiliation links. <laughs> and finally just I to... sat down, man, and I was like, I was reading in a book about being yourself and it, it had nothing to do with video and live streaming but it was talking about you know uh being yourself and you know your your why and, and who you are and staying true to who you are and who you are should be same person indoors outdoors amongst believers amongst unbelievers at work in the marketplace wow. like that and i said okay so if i'm gonna go do facebook live if i'm gonna go and deliver any type of message i want to be true to who i am right right and so i started really honing in on the content that I was getting ready to deliver, my mood, my personality, my tone, how I wanted the the listeners to feel after spending right. 30 minutes or an hour with me. And then I began to piece stuff together, man, that really brought the show and the look together. And after I stopped comparing myself to others and understood that, because this, this is a, a problem that a lot of folks have, there are a lot of people in this space right now, especially due to COVID. Would you all agree with me? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, absolutely. Man. absolutely. But the difference is, it's not like we have this pie and it's 12 slices and we all got to rush to try and get our piece of this pie in terms of streaming online. As long right. as you are being yourself with your message, what God has given you and what's been placed in you, nobody else can deliver and present it like you can. So the only thing you have to do is get comfortable and rooted <sighs> and seated in what you've been called to do online. If this is mm. the space you're going to go into, be your authentic self because as I was trying to like imitate other folks, man, I would be sweating and I would get off that Facebook wow. live and be like, I am exhausted because I was trying to do it like this person. And wow. my wife said man, to me, she was like, preach. I noticed the part I notice 
when you begin to settle in on yourself and who you were, Preach. you got comfortable, you were at peace, you was funny, yeah. but you was wow. dropping so much wisdom and it just, it wow. changed everything for me. So I don't know if any wow, of you had dear. that experience, but that was my experience. So now I just got to be authentically me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was yes, saying, you be, nobody could beat you being you, you know, and so be you uniquely you. Because um, that's what people want to see. You know, I always tell the clients that I coach and everything, I say, you mean to tell me that you can't find a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people out of seven billion people in the world? You can't find two thousand that love you. You can't find three thousand that love you. And so a lot of times we have to understand that it's about the voice that we have. Everybody has a voice. And everybody right. has a voice that will attract certain individuals. Mm -hmm. And so once we wow. know that and we know uh, how to remain comfortable with, with ourselves and know that what we have to offer is just as valuable as anybody else, you know, mm. and, and like this, you know, we used to do like this, even as a musician, I, when I, I talk about musicians and things, I said, you know what, I'll show you anything I know, any chords I know and all that. I'll show it to you. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not scared that you're going to take my position and all that. I realized say that again. play the same chord, right? It is totally different. Right. We can play the same chord. You're going to apply that chord differently than I'm going to apply that chord. It's the same way uh, with the uh, the actual content, even though we're live streamers, even though we are content creators, we could create. We see it all the time where we create the same uh, topic as far as our videos and stuff are concerned. But yet and still different people land on our pages and mm. gravity yep. that we're putting out. Yeah. And so you never you know, there's no such thing as competition to me. Right. There's no, no such thing. thing. There's so much out here that everybody can get a piece of the pie. And so when we when we do things like this, we learn to collab. I mean, even out of this collaboration, we'll see people begin to follow all of us. Right. Because we came together, people that never were introduced to maybe one of us. Right. But now because we came together, now we have a different audience that, you know, say, hey, I, I want to check out what they're doing and all this type of stuff as well. And so you always got to look at things positively and, and know that you have, you know, God created us with everything uh, we need to succeed in this world within us. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like to say too, that matter of fact, you follow, I got to drop y'all names up there. So we know who, uh -huh. so they know who y'all are. Yeah. You, you automatically um, relinquish, right. And you automatically forfeit like your God given, um, you know, just natural self when you try to be somebody else. So the people that you would have connected with or would have attracted or the people that you would have led or, you know, uh, been somebody to, you can't be that now because you're, you're trying yeah. to be the next, you're trying to be the next man. So I know that that hit me hard because I kind of get into the whole, or oh, let me do what they're doing or let me go this way. Let me go that way. And I don't even realize that I already have a community of people. I already have a, a group of people who have band together to support anything that I do. Right. So it makes you feel bad when you start to go astray or start to go here or start to sway left and right because you're leaving your tribe behind trying to trying to be somebody else leader of their tribe right so uh, you have good. to definitely you, yeah i mean I, I i had to repent recently like I, I like on real talk like i you know god gives us all people that we're assigned to you're not mm -hmm. trying to be deep but god gives us all people that we're assigned to right we have Facts. to reach those people we have to touch those people reach them we have to lead them we have to help them but if we're not being ourselves, if we're not truly digging down deep in ourselves, and to be ourselves to find out the jewels that God has put inside us, we will never reach those people. We'll never touch those people. And if we do, we will never live out that mission into the full fruition of what it really is because we're, you know, like the Bible says, double minded man, he, he, he gets nothing. So we unstable. can't be double minded when it, yeah, unstable. Like we can't be double minded in who we are. We have to be authentically ourselves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love that. Man, that's, 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 listen, that is tremendous. Um, because like we, we are all guilty and um, and this is something I talk about all the time. Like I, I be screaming it, you know, I, I felt like, you know, the late great Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, I would walk around the house and be like, you know, I done been to the mountaintop because y'all make me sick. <laughs> I'm like, because it's, it's this influence of culture, you know, and you get to the point where right. it's like, yo, by by any means necessary, I don't even care no more. You know, I'm going to say it. I'm going to scream it to the top of my lungs. And and we all fall victim to it because we we work in these arenas. And so it's easy to kind of get caught up um, in it. But I was telling somebody the other day, I said, the things that I coach, consult and advise you on, 
I don't even do. I said, and they were like, well, why are you telling me to do it? I'm like, because you, your, your priorities are different than mine. You're trying to be famous. You're trying mm. to be popular. You want followers. Mm. You want, mm -hmm. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Because the, my audience has already been assigned to my voice. Come it, on, It's now. up to me right. whether to actually speak to the people that I'm supposed to be talking to. So, you know, I'm not trying to reach everybody. I'm trying to find who are the people that are already assigned to me that will also help me work smarter and mm. not work harder. And so, again, like I said, every one of us in our own right, we're great. When you get in, the, 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 the great thing about these groups is that you're going to find inspiration. The great thing about Let's Get Live, Ecamm, all these communities is that you're going to be inspired. But the worst thing about these groups that nobody really talks about is that you can get lost and caught up in the sauce because it's like, Wait a minute. So Fact. they got the A7S3, so I got to get that. Or he got the 6100, so I got to get that. Or she got the Rodecaster Pro, so I got to get that. And and and, and I'm going to just be wrong. Like, your content sucks. And that, that's, no, that's not disrespectful. It's not saying you suck as a person. It's like, no, mm -hmm. cultivate the content. Cultivate wow. your character. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking wow. about storytelling. When you yeah, when wow. you get in the you know when um Donald Miller if if you don't know who Donald Miller is you um and, and talking about a story brand like we're all readers like you want to know why this stream looks like this because I read a book at some point you know what I'm saying <laughs> I didn't I didn't go to YouTube <laughs> and just sit there all day it's like there are a thousand other right. concepts that are going into this and it's like it's like you 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 can't get caught up in this sauce and and shout out to you know one of my mentors ken branson mastermind productions you know he always talked about gas gear acquisition syndrome it was like yeah doc i got Man. that can you know what i'm saying that canon 5d mark four you know i got that one dx mark two you know i got that fs9 it's like bro but like wow. for what like the story sucks like in every story wow. there's a character and wow. every character has to have some type of character and some type of integrity to mm -hmm. overcome the obstacles that are presented before them so they can get to the end of the story. Yeah, That's right. what people want to see. After this overlay goes away, they want, when they follow us, they're going to be like, okay, that show was dope, but is Charles who he said he is? Yeah. Is Jermaine who yeah. he say he is? Is Walter who he says he is? Is Alicia or Strick? Are these people really like, do they story match up, you know what I'm saying, with this live presentation that they did? Wow. And that's why I think Man. people fall short. Turn the camera. Use oh, yeah. your phone. You mm. forget the camera. Forget what it looks like. I mm. I got an eCam affiliate link. I don't want you to buy eCam <laughs> if it's if it's gonna get you stuck. You know, like forget that. Wow. Cult wow. Cultivate your character. Wow. Cultivate your story and just start yeah. talking to your audience. People will buy your gear. You, I'm a testament to it. You won't even have to buy it because they'll be like, bro, I just need to hear more of your story. What is it gonna take? Yeah. But yes. everybody don't want to hear that. They want that. That A one, go buy it. You gonna be right. they, all, they always say they come they come for this, but they stay for you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right. They come for that, yeah. but they stay for you. So you, we all have to work on. You know, not me included. We all have to work on getting them to stay for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's where being uniquely you comes in at. Because if you're not being uniquely you and trying to be somebody else, well, they already got that over there. Mm. They already got this yes, over sir. here. So right. you're giving them no reason to stay for you. Yeah. So that's that's right, powerful, right. bro. That's the Thank same you. thing I, I teach, man. Because I've learned because honestly learning to live stream or learning to build a brand online kind of because that's what everybody's looking to do they're trying to brand themselves online it's a process right and oftentimes we're trying to jump to that end result of seeing this what we're putting forth right now they don't right. understand as a process and i tell folks there will always be and especially if you're a person of faith <laughs> god is going to develop your character before he addresses the context of your condition your condition Man. Is what's going on around you what you're trying to change if you're trying to improve your visibility if you're trying to get your message out there you're trying to build a brand you're trying to get that income you're trying to leave your nine to five because you don't want to clock in anymore that's a process but if you want Ooh. that you got to have a certain Ooh. character because your abilities Ooh. and your gifts right. they might open the door for you but your character is going to keep you there because if not you'll be one way in front of the camera and a totally different person outside Ooh. of it. And now you're leaving this double life and that Ooh. won't last long, right? You'll end up exhausted. You will end up worn out. And so you always have to know that there's going to be a process if you want to get to a certain place Man. in a certain stage in life. 
Like I say, God is more concerned about our character than he is the context of our situation. Because if he work on our character, we can go and work on our situation. We can read that book. We can watch that right. YouTube video. We can get live streaming. But our character has so, to be right. So, so let me That's let wild. me say it this way. I, I I love what you said, and and I and I want to add something to it just a little bit. And Come on, Strick. For people for people that want to be successful in streaming, guess what? They're already successful in another industry. Mm. Let me say oh, it again. Say it. Say it again. Don't 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 think that. I'm having an issue with my job and I don't really like it. I'm, I'm, I'm not hitting my numbers cause I'm tired. I don't want to be here. Don't think you're going to turn on a camera and be the best live streamer ever because you don't have the discipline for it. Mm, right. when you want to come over here is when you're top in sales, when you're top at your job, when everybody's telling you how great you are and you have, he said character. I want to say the discipline to do this the right way. So, yes, so one of the disciplines is, hey, I got to wake up. I got to go to sleep. I got to do this work. I got to do that. There's certain things that you have to do all along the way to get to the live stream and to be effective. And if you don't have the discipline, you'll miss something. You yes, know, we sir. have tools that we use. You say, I want to use that tool. Well, if you don't want to use the tools and have the discipline to write out a good description like Jermaine did today, if you don't have those things, you're going to miss out on being successful. And it takes discipline. And yes, I say that the people that are going to be successful in this industry are already successful in other industries. All they're doing is adding another tool to communicate to their audience, which is not going away listen to Absolutely. me streaming is not going away this is the brand new thing that is happening i promise you in yeah. the city somebody said hey strict man i would love to meet with you let's do lunch i'm finna cut out 30 minutes travel times uh both ways let's wow. we can do lunch time but just today <laughs> listen i'm gonna go in the office man let's just do it online i'll send you a link we can talk that way and we can sit in right eat. you can eat where you are and i can eat what not not saying that <laughs> i'm getting completely away from having some human contact but while we're going through this um pandemic let's both of us be safe let's just connect yeah. i'll send you a link yeah Facts. right no but man, we no but yeah my, my questions my, coming in Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, you could you could look for the question, but my friend Stephanie, question real quick, James uh, Hicks. Stephanie, no, go ahead, go ahead. Outside of the gear, lights, video, audio, what do you use for the run of show? Um, if you saw me dropping names up under our, my guests <laughs> during the show, I'm using uh, <laughs> eCam to bring this this uh, production to to the masses right now. But I'm pretty sure there's other stuff that out there that you guys might recommend. But I think all of us are using ecam right now so that was a question yeah but when he said run of show is he mean is he meaning the program like the actual yeah. Um, right or, yeah maybe he maybe talk, he can read timing structure and all that or exactly yeah oh, okay is he talking about yeah, that that might be but uh yeah I, I, uh, my friend stephanie lou she was saying she was saying on her stream i helped her get her show up which is a showrunner show and she's saying streaming is now a billion dollar industry b -b and she says b -b 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 billion dollar industry so it's kind of one of those things man i love what Strick had to say about um people who are already successful right because these are somewhat people who've reached a certain like mm -hmm. paramount or apex right so now it's time for you to take it from you know like like i like to say uh we we moved out of um uh, brick and mortar to click and order so you have basically exhausted your reach right so now it's time to literally jump in the boat and and catch a wave and really take it to the masses and with streaming that is exactly what streaming can do for you because the opportunity the opportunity is endless especially if you get into like what water's getting into with like remote production and stuff like that it's a it could be a right. game changer man some of these accounts are thousands upon thousands of dollars if you can close some of these deals with these um you know, companies or even get some government contracts for like schools or something like that. They need all remote production. So, I mean, I, I think that can definitely bring a, a certain different element to the to the conversation. I agree. Right. I mean, it, even it, like the strict was saying earlier about uh, about, you know, just doing a Zoom now. Really, business is going to go to that now. Right. The pandemic has forced them and they realize, wow, now I can save a whole lot of money by just allowing my employees to be at home and still get the work done. So like in Silicon Valley. 
they're not going to be meeting like they used to. They're not going to be coming to the building. They're going to allow a lot of their developers and programmers and stuff to work right from home and everything. So live wow. streaming has really changed the game tremendously. Wow. And the funny thing is, it's been out here for years, right? It's been out here for years. Um, but the pandemic really brought it to the forefront, you know, and now everybody is jumping hole, especially, uh, you know, we're all uh, faith, men of faith, especially the church. I mean, they have just like, you know, because it forced them to say, okay, either you're going to get on live streaming or you won't have church at all, you know? And mm, so you right. had to, mm. you know, that's true. You know, that's true. You know, and I always say, and it's real important now, I always say every great leader or every great business, every great CEO should have three types of sight. You should have mm. hindsight, insight, mm. and foresight. foresight. Hindsight mm. is, is looking at what happened in the past and how mm. does that relate to what I'm doing now in my business. Insight yes, is see what's happening right now and yes, see sir. how I need to do business. Foresight mm. is being able to see what's happening in the future, three to mm. five years from now, and what we need to do to move forward in that, right? Mm. We look at companies like Toys R Us. We look at companies like Kmart. They failed mm. in the foresight area, right? Mm. They didn't see everybody coming. Now, Walmart, they're kind of on a corrective path now, right? And they're trying to keep up with, with the Amazon, right? Mm. And so mm. you got to make sure that you're keeping up. <laughs> they said churches left the building. Exactly. <laughs> you have to make sure that you're staying ahead of the game, not, not mm. keeping up with the game, but you're staying ahead of the game, even with your content. Find out what your audience needs. What do they want? What are the things that they're struggling with and give them what they need? Wow. You know, um, you, can't, you can't give content that you feel your audience wants, right? Why would you build a course uh, without really surveying your audience and finding out if the course is really what they want. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. Find out what your audience needs. What are their pain points? What are the things that they're struggling with? And yes, then sir. make content around that. I want to say, too, I love that about hindsight, insight, and foresight. I don't think I've ever heard it like that. But I want to add one more, and that is oversight, right? That's the ability to be yes. in all three of those places in one time. That's what yes. God is. He's yes. omnipresent. He's omni. Uh, he's omniscient. So he's able to see the past, the, 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 the now, and the future. So we have to be able to tap into that gift as well to be able to have oversight to see everything. Step, step, Take a step back, right, and see what, every, what what's going on on the grand scheme of things and be able able to dictate like we are kings right be able to like a monarch and like a king be able to make decisions from an oversight standpoint too i think that was brilliant bro i love that yeah no nah, absolutely and I, I just want i know you got to go um, you got to bring something up real quick charles but mm -hmm. i did just want to speak you know to what alicia was saying um those of you that are in this space and and i've shared this and i, and I can't you know nda i can't really go into a lot of detail but this is what i will say um there are trillions I, i'm gonna it's not a billion dollar industry it's a trillion dollar industry like legit and there are, and this is why i don't have to be intimidated by anybody on the screen nobody has to be intimidated by me because when we say i'm intimidated by you sir <laughs> when we say when we Congrats. say that there's opportunity out here for everybody there is opportunity out here for everybody and and I was having this conversation with Alicio, and to Strick's point, you know, it's like I, I one day I I felt some type of way, and I had to act like a king because I'm like, wait a minute, I, I'm I might be new to you people, but I'm not new to this, so don't don't get it twisted. Um, and that ain't no shade to anybody. That's just at the end of the day, um, that that's a string king for a reason. And so it's like to Strick's point because we are already successful in our arenas, this is another tool. And right. so the fact that I have this tool, somebody else saw my discipline, somebody else mm -hmm. saw my character, somebody else saw my consistency. They saw all of that and they say, yo, I got an opportunity for you. And so again, you know, if, if, if we take what has been said tonight, because we're still talking about live streaming, I know you have, you know, I like, I thought we were going to talk about tech and cameras and what's the latest camera now. We're still talking about that. Um, but it's, I, I want you to understand for those of you that are looking to say, Hey, how can I take this to another level from a standpoint of, you know, income, another, you know, cause that's not a conversation a lot of people are having to this point that live streaming is going nowhere. It's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and and I hope we get back to some sense of normalcy, but let's just keep it 100. Let's, let's stay realistic. 
you know, especially to, you know, our people of faith, if you are banking on getting back into the building, for those of you that are already there, you're going to miss a whole nother boat, you know, that, that Noah is currently building. This ark right now is being built. And so it's like, just like the last yeah. call, you're going to get on <laughs> or you, you're going to drown. Because you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? I, I, I truly believe that the pandemic came. And I won't say there's, you know, people say, oh, the second wave's coming, the third wave's coming. I don't even care about another wave of the pandemic. I don't care. Right. It can come or it, right. they don't have to come. But the first wave of the pandemic surely came to tell you what's coming for the future. Right. And right. To, to tell you where we need to be heading in the future. So whether another pandemic come or not, this is staying here forever. So you need to definitely use this opportunity to get uh, on, on. Like you said, get on the ship, brother. Get on the boat. Yeah. Get in, man. Love it. Whatever, whatever you got to do. And it was collaboration. It was collaboration that brought me, you know, because I'm like, God, I want to do this. I need to do that. I need to do that. And so I'm big on not being lazy. Um, I'm big on using what I have. I'm big on being the woman, um, you know, the widow who was about to sell her son. Prophet comes to our house. She said, what do you have? I don't have nothing but this cruise, this jar of oil. And not even mm. understanding you're overlooking the greatest thing that, that, that you have. Damn. Everybody Ooh. up here, everybody on the stream, you have a gift. You have something that you're overlooking because you're comparing it to somebody else. What Charles said earlier, one of the things I tell people all the time, never use somebody else's finish line to determine how you start your race. Don't use where they are mm. in their process mm, right. mm, to determine mm, how you go through yours. And yeah. so the thing is, you're overlooking what seems small when it could be the greatest mm. thing ever. She's sitting here trying to figure out how am I going to pay this? How am I going to do that? He tells her something crazy. You're already in debt. Go get in some more debt and borrow. Well, in terms mm. of borrowing, what does that mean? Go ask somebody for some help. Go collab. Mm. Go 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 get in mm. debt of time. A strict, I'm gonna blow you up. Alicia, I can't pay you right now, but but the time <laughs> is coming. I need some, I need yeah. some vessels. I need I need some containers. And, yeah, and, and as long as he, and as long as he poured. The oil flowed, but and, and but until we humble ourselves to say, "Yo, I'm overlooking what seems so small," you know that that mustard yeah. seed size mm. that can move wow. the greatest mountain in your yeah. life. It's like, yo, if you go back, pick that thing up, and it's like, wow. man, I, I I was overlooking this little thing right here. It yeah. literally turned out to be the greatest thing ever in my life, and and literally wow. in a matter of two weeks, and I'm sitting here like. Whoa. So I, I should have done this. Wow. I should have listened <laughs> a long time ago, you know, and, yeah. and I might be, you know, somewhere different. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just wanted to. Put that so, out there. I so, so let me say, say this. Go ahead, go, go ahead Charles. I, well, man, I, I really can't say much. I really want to listen to Walter all day. Like I could listen to him <laughs> all day. All day. Right. Oh, he, he downright <laughs> preaches. He's a creator. You guys, please look him up. Look him yeah. up and uh, yeah. go to his his uh, merchandise shop and shop and go buy some of his fair creative uh, t shirts and uh, all the stuff he's got in there. And watch his YouTube videos. I, I'm just crazy about everybody that's on the screen. I mean, y'all know how much I love Alicia your way, and I'm getting a chance to meet Jermaine and and Charles was just on the stream show uh, Sunday. So with his uh, production set up, so we appreciate him coming and being a part of the stream show. That being said, if you're in this and you're starting to stream, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, you got a channel, I want to tell you this. Do not get ahead of yourself and think because mm. you put two videos up that you're going to be the <laughs> next YouTube star. Allow yourself some time to grow, all right? Wow. Allow yourself some time to understand what you're doing. Allow yourself some real time to dial into your camera and make sure you know yes. you can do it manually to get the best out of it. I say this about equipment. Don't For me, I don't buy new equipment until I understand the equipment that I have. I use it to the That's best of its ability. And then when I feel like I'm able to advance and know what my next step is and how to use that based on what I have right now, then I make the investment. But I'm, I'm not making an investment until I have exhausted what I'm using right now to its fullest potential and I know what I'm doing 
because when I get the new piece of equipment, I know how to use it. Mm. And I know how to make it look better. Then there's nothing worse than buying a new camera and it looks worse than the old camera you had and you can't figure it out. Wow. Yeah, like that's right. not the spot you want to be in. You want to be in when you get that new camera, you understand one thing. It's not just the camera. I want to be sure I get that right lens for the cameras that's going to give me the right look. Because people make that mistake, I made that mistake, upgraded the camera and looked the same. Mm -hmm. What was my problem? Wow, it was too. my me lens. Too. I had me to get too. a new lens. So if you don't understand that, stay where you're at until you get the information. Uh, I mean, we already talked about the you know getting gear that you don't need. I want you to give yourself time to grow in what you have. That's good. That's don't good. think that automatically you're live and all of your friends and family are going to watch you all the time because you're live and you're important to everybody that you know. <laughs> That's not true. You are important. You are special. Yeah. But people just have not that important. No, to do. Not this, right. <laughs> so, Charles, man, I know you had Keep, keep the comments wanna... coming. Keep the lights coming. Well, we, we got a couple we got of questions. questions, man. Let me go yeah, back we got to a couple, James. A couple of them, actually. Uh, did we answer James? We did. On about the workflow? Yeah, he came back through okay. and said your workflow. So, do you schedule on YouTube and share the same link across platforms? Tough capturing comments from multiple platforms. So, that was James. Yeah. So I don't mind going and get that based on what I do. Anybody else want to grab it? I don't want to step on anybody's toes on that one. Well, I'll, I'll just say real say. quick. I, I'll just say real quick that um, so the way um, the Facebook algorithm works, and of course these these platforms are all competing platforms, whether you want to believe it or not, they're competing platforms. Um, so they have their certain things that they do to in, in, in good competition, right? So um, I know if you take a YouTube link, right, and share it on Facebook, you're automatically going to knock, potentially knock your content down um, in the algorithm from getting as many shares or getting as many uh, looks as you could will potentially get. So for instance, if you have a, on your Facebook page, 5,000 people, if you share a YouTube link in the main post, they, they may only show it to 10% of those people versus if you would just go in there and say, Hey, I'm live on YouTube right now. Come check me out. That may share that to 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 percent of your people so um you just have to use some wisdom when you're sharing across multiple platforms not to do something that could actually knock you down in the algorithm that's why you actually see a lot of people when they share youtube content they say hey i got a new video check the first comment and it'll be the link to the video because it's not in the actual post itself and getting knocked down the algorithm and another thing i would say to that is be very careful of trying to pull people across different platforms. So they're on a certain platform for a reason, right? If they're on IG, that's because that's what they fancy. If they're on Facebook or YouTube, that's what they fancy. So don't try too hard to pull people. Hey, come over here. Hey, come over here. If they vibing with you and they like what you're doing, they're going to people are fanatics when especially when they like what you're doing people are going to automatically look you up click on all your socials they're going to follow you on your socials you don't necessarily have to tell people that it's good to remind them have a good call to action there's nothing wrong with that but don't be to the point where you you feel like like strict said you're that important that you're going to pull them from this platform to that platform so uh go ahead strict so um there's a lot of ways of thinking about it. i'm just going to tell you what i do in my workflow uh, so I am still building an audience uh, across social media. So I actually uh, do use a system called Restream. And right now uh, in Restream, based on the program that I have, you can go in and schedule uh, your particular live stream. So you can put in your thumbnail, write your description, and actually say, I'm going live this time, this day, on all of these platforms. It's gonna send a link uh, to those platforms and letting all of your friends know that, hey, or a majority of your friends, as Alicia would say, it's not gonna tell everybody, but it's gonna tell a lot of people, hey, you're going live on this day and this time as a reminder. That's Facebook, YouTube, uh, and, and whatever else. If you're in groups or if you have your own page, you can just put it in multiple places. That's part of it that's how you get started like and then uh in ecamm the system that i use you're actually able to go live but you have to click that event for you to actually to go live in all of those places i have made the mistake of going live in restream 
and not going live to that particular event and then you kind of lose some traction because people are waiting on that event and they have they may have set a reminder or they are looking for the description for that particular event and you won't have it if you don't click that scheduled event so i hope that helps you uh this is something that i'm working on as far as a workflow workflow we are actually down to 10 different steps that you have to go through so you'll see that from the stream show really soon a workflow for multi-streaming with restream it is not easy uh, like i said we have 10 steps but once you uh, have a good checklist you can go down uh you won't miss anything yeah and i right. use and so, that's what i do too. Um, use restream and yeah and ECAM. yeah we do go the ahead, same man. thing for our uh, we do the same thing for our church and um one of the things that he was asking about was capturing the comments from the multiple platforms uh what uh dj strick was talking about as far as what we use uh ecamm live it allows you to do that and so you'll get you'll be able to capture the comments from youtube you'll be able to capture the comments from your facebook group or your fr uh, facebook pro personal profile um and all of those would be in one area and so yeah if you can find a system that'll work for you uh, whether if you're on PC or Mac, um, that'll bring all that in, it'll make life so much easier. So then as a moderator, you may not necessarily have to kind of jump around, you know, to all the different platforms. You can kind of uh, have that coming in all into one and kind of see those comments coming in or what have you. Cool. All right, James, hope to help you out. Another question we got, what are some tips on how to poll your audience? Anybody got any suggestions on that? What do you so mean? So doing the live right? uh, will be Is my question the world before the live. That was from Michelle Andrews. If you could give us a little bit more clarity. Is that during the live before when you talk uh, about polling? So I have question. I oh. have polled uh, my audience, but I used it uh, in a repurposed video. So I just took a live what happened live five, six minutes of that live. And then I uh, shared it on Facebook and did a poll with, you know, how are you using Ecamm? Are you using it for live stream or record it? And they can, you know, press the button on uh, which one, how they're using it basically. Said, but that's one of the things polling, I polling for She content. says polling for content. So like, Michelle, you mean, how do you approach your audience and ask them what type of content they want to see? Is that what you're asking? Cause that's a, that's a good um, question. Great question. And uh, just to, and we're going to let her answer that. And I do see a question about the lighting. She said, what color lighting are you using? Who was that? Yeah. How are we getting the different color lights back there? I saw that too. That was the other one I was coming back to. While, while Michelle's uh, clarifying that. Cause I, I, that's a great okay. question. I do have two perspectives on polling your audience for content. Um, but you have to do it strategically. Um, right. So where is that question about the, uh, she said yes. About, oh, yeah, oh, Wayne. It's Wayne. How are y'all getting the background? Okay, purple, blue, green. That's Wayne Andrews. So me, I'm a budget guy. I use these cheap joints right here, $20 on Amazon. And uh, that give me all the lighting I need. So I don't know if somebody else got some tips. Yeah, I, my, two, my two red lights at the bottom are kind of like those. And they have a little remote control with them. Uh, yeah. Then the actual the two uh, spotlights, those are Yi lights. Um, so those are, they're the RGB white yeah. um, colored lights, and they can, you know, they're Wi-Fi, they can be controlled. And then around my desk, I have the LED right. strip, strip lights or what have you. And um, right. and so, yeah, you don't, I mean, literally that, that entire set probably cost me uh, under $100 to do. And so you, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get a great look and, um, and feel for your um, your environment you're trying to create. Yeah, I would I would say back I would say backlighting is super important because it does separate you from the key light and it does separate you from your background. So um, and, and it's one of those things that just looks super, super cool just to have a backlighting with some color. And a lot of times you can add it with your branding, like my branding is content ecosystem. So my colors are green. You know, people mm -hmm. usually use their backlighting to go with, you know, match mm -hmm. their overlays and stuff like that. But lighting is super cheap. Don't be out here like most people trying to buy two, three, four hundred dollar RGBs. You don't you do not need those <laughs> like I my RGBs are twenty dollars on Amazon. All right. What I used that Dove. Oh no, my bad. No, I was just saying. Um, <laughs> you know, I was waiting for you to get done. Uh, it's, um, 
It's the I don't even know how to pronounce this. Is um, I I just call it the um a VC or a VC two. I'll, I'll drop the link in the chat. Um, G two RGB video. I think it was like sixty dollars or something like that. But when I was before I got that, the only reason I got that because I just got tired of um, I went the the I, I might have been cheap. Now I wasn't cheaper than you, Alicia, but I think we were about right there. Um, just the LA, like the LED, the monster joints, like when they first started selling them in Walmart or whatever, I just went the old route, just bought a couple of them and, um, bought the actual can situations. Um, and just literally I had them posted up just on something behind me, just shining on the wall. And, um, and I have, I have four of them that, that, that all of that may have cost me like $30 at the time. And I use that forever. Um, and then I just got tired of looking at it the way it was set up. Um, and I cannot think of the YouTuber's name right now. I promise you, I'll drop it in the chat. And uh, and then he, this is when I was thinking about changing my setup. And then he was using this, and there was a whole bunch of comparisons coming out about you know these small little RGB panel lights or whatever. And uh, I was like, I like your light. I like the color production it gives. Um, I think I'm gonna buy this. And and then the great thing is about buying this. I mean, I've actually been talking to them. Um, uh, they put me in the tester program and everything, so I got some more stuff coming. Um, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. I'm see, y'all been streaming forever, you know. I'm just getting into this whole, you know, don't do that, don't do that, you know, this this deal, you know, this free gear conversation. I love what Lim said. Lim said, make sure, make sure you don't confuse background lighting with uh, backlighting, so that's good, yeah, correct. Correct. Right, right. With the practical yeah. lighting, yeah. Because I have, yeah, I'm but it, you can, you can. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Oh, you can go ahead. Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, I was gonna say I saw somebody mention um, those hue, the Philip hue lights. I have them all throughout my joint. Like I got my, yeah. I got my key light over here. Big Again, money grill. Everything is is going off those Phillips because I can just press a button and change the color. I can right. go light, dark, set the mood, and so. I set everything up through that because I'm sitting here sometimes and where I, where I shoot, even though I have blackout curtains, depending on the time of day, the light may start to get through there a little bit. And then I can just adjust the light even if I'm on the live and I see that my set coloration is starting to change. I can just, you know, tone it down or bring it up a little bit. And But then for my little accent lights as well, I'm using some of those um, Phillips just strips, light strips, same thing. You can change the color on them. But, um, yeah, go ahead, Jermaine. Oh no no no! I was saying y'all are just me- big money grips, you know, with the Phillips Phillips hue, you know. <laughs> I just had a, I just had a ye light, you know, just the ye light, you know, what have y'all got the Phillips hue? I'm like, well, I can't step up there yet, not just yet. So uh, I I, I want to touch on that question where she says uh, how polling for content. Oh. I'm yeah, I'm just she didn't really clarify that, but I'm gonna just jump in there and and just kind of put my spin on it as it relates to polling. She your, did say before for, the live, bro. So she okay. did come back and say before the live, yeah. But before the before live, to, mm-hmm. to figure out what type of content that they would want. You think yep. is that where she's going with it? Okay. So yeah, it would it would be the same concept then. So basically, if if you have an audience, and this is just my perspective, right? If if you have an audience, right, that, that they're already in your audience and that they already follow you, then you absolutely want to deliver on like your brand promise and your core promise to your audience and figure out, you know, maybe what they want to see more from you. But keep in mind that they're already in your audience. So they've already bought into something that you're doing. They bought they bought into your brand. So I would say uh, just continue to do right that what what whatever you've done to to get them to watch initially and to keep them watching. And I would also say you might want to go a step further, not to just poll your audience, but poll uh, like other people kind of to figure out how you can now pull them into your audience. So um, if anything, if you're going to poll your current audience, then poll them in a way that can engage new viewers, right? And engage new, new watchers, because I believe that, like I said, you're going to continue to do what you're already doing with your audience. Just do that well, like you've already been doing, but that won't necessarily grow your audience. You know what I'm saying? So you have to do something that you're going to be able to, um, you know, uh, far as like maybe tap into some type in your industry, of course, tap into some type of trends or uh, some type of popular topics in your in your niche, your niche or whatever. And that way you can also appease 
uh, your current audience and then also get new new viewers and mm-hmm. things like that. So uh, polling your audience is important, but I don't, I don't think it's as important as trying to um, figure out how you can uh, engage new, new viewers, if that makes sense. Right. So and I want to go ahead. Go ahead. Straight. Go ahead. Straight. Because I've been running so my mouth. I just want. I just want to ask Alicia a question because I know for me it was hard trying to figure out uh, what content to make. And a lot of times people get into that space where they feel like they have something to say. They just don't know what it is. And don't mm-hmm. you don't you think it's important for someone to evaluate? Uh, and you may have already said this, evaluate where they are and what kind of content they want to make, like where, what niche they yeah. want to have, what are they good yeah. at, what are you good at talking about, what are you good at talking about that can also, that you can also monetize down the road, all of those things maybe go into the idea of, you know, where you want your channel or what you want your lives to be about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I'm asking say, you this question because I know you've gone down this road as well several times yeah, to say, I, okay, what what do I want my content to be about? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, w- I would say, so th- kind of going a little bit back to the question too, um, and then I'm going to bring it full circle. So, like, I, I think a lot of times as it relates to polling our audience and figuring out our messaging and figuring out what we want to talk about, um, I, I believe that develops as we just get out there and start doing our thing. Right. You know, uh, right. polling your audience is what we're doing at right now because we have questions on lighting. We have questions on, um, um, exactly. you know, the, so, I mean, the, just pay attention. If this makes sense, pay attention to what they're asking in the comments. That's your next video topic. Right. Pay attention to what they're saying. Um, also, just kind of like an idea. If you think of I- ideas like a uh, like a main idea, you know how in kindergarten they taught you how to make the main idea and then the, the subsidiary mm-hmm. ideas from the main idea. So, I mean, if you think about that kind of bubble you can literally have a hundred, 10 topics off of one question <laughs> literally 10 ideas or 10 video ideas literally can stem from one question so um, going back to what you were saying yeah it's super important strict to find out your messaging and what you actually want to talk about I've been kind of going in circles with that myself and I kind of drilled it down to content creation and monetization and just being able to just deliver to people like how you can create content but at the same time not get caught up in the content hamster wheel like you see so many people but they get caught up in this content hamster wheel. Got to create content. They're dropping videos every day. They're dropping videos every day. It's like, man, you're killing it. But that is not circling back, cycling back to their main point in their mission, which is not just monetization, but to build their brand and build their legacy. So uh, absolutely strict. One approach that I I took when I first started out um, was once I knew sort of the arena I was going to operate in, and take for instance, I, I said earlier, my wife and I, we lead an organization uh, called You Before Me where we do marriage and family coaching and we help with marriage counseling, premarital counseling and blended families and all of that. But one of the ways I kind of narrowed down what our niche was going to be was we created a Facebook group, right? And in that group, we begin to drop little subjects, right? And see what got the most engagement. So that was one way. So whatever lane you're in, say if it's finances, you create a group about finances you talk about finances but you'll be able to poll and then another thing was once I got folks on my mailing list I would see what articles that I shared or what information I shared that got the most engagement right and then I would ask them because now they're on my mailing list they like something that I've shared or brought that made them subscribe initially and that was another way to engage in terms of what content I can bring that would be most valuable and be interactive and then the second thing I did was I went through other people who was in my space so other marriage and family organizations, I watched their lives. I looked at the comments and the questions that people were asking in their lives. And then I began to do a live video in my group about that particular question that was asked. And so as I read books, as I watch TV, I'm getting an idea. If something pops up and it's about relationships or leadership, I'm watching any question that follows. I'm watching whatever resources pop up. And then I and take that and I create an email. I can tell you how many times I've sat there and I watched TV or I read a book or I I listened to somebody else's live and I created a whole broadcast or a whole email segment just based on that because it's in my space. Can I interrupt you? Yeah, go ahead, Can I interrupt you, Charles? Because, you know, you have such a smooth tone, smooth (laughs) delivery. (laughs) Right. Man, if somebody was taking notes, like you just gave the book away, brother. I need (laughs) you to take a breath. 
because I it, if I was going to tell somebody what to do, I, I would say exactly what you said. Like, that's yeah. a great way to understand content. You you already knew the direction you were going to go. And I'm interrupting you only because I want people to be able to get the point. Like you yeah. gave at least five steps so smooth. I didn't want it to go over people's head. And, and, and if I can get you to repeat it, that would be really cool because folks need to know the process uh, to actually gaining content and looking at some of the leaders in the industry going into the comments is gold. Yeah. Looking at the questions that are asked inside of somebody. So I interrupt you, interrupt you only for you to breathe so you can repeat <laughs> that for everybody. So I apologize. Yeah, man. So the first thing was, again, creating that group, even if it's just a few people in there, create a group and, and kind of poll the group first, your Facebook group. Um, the second thing I would recommend is following other folks who are in your space, in your arena, watching their lives and, and, the, and the comments and the questions that pop up on their live feeds, and then you go create content around that. As you're out and about, and this goes to Alicia's point, because he was like, you got to know what it is that you want to talk about and speak about. As the stuff that you watch and the stuff that you consume, it's ultimately going to come out of you. Like when you sit down and you talk about media, when you sit down and you talk about a scripture or whatever it is, it's stuff that you've already consumed. So that's another space you go to. You go to the content that you're already consuming, that you know back and forth, right? And then you, you package that. And then you find a way to get an email list. So you create some type of funnel where you get email lists and then you go into your email group and you send those emails out saying, hey, I'm getting ready to do a show around X, Y, and Z. What else would you like to hear about? Some people are going to throw some random stuff in there that's going to be off topic, but it might not fit that show, but it'll be for another show. Um, so those are my the three things that I've been doing since I've been kind of in this space to find content, right? And whatever I wake up thinking about, <laughs> whatever I wake up and think about, I know that's in me and I can speak to it. So I can just hit, go on a, on a camera, hit live, and I can talk to it because I've already consumed it. I watched other right. people's videos. I Easy. read the books on it. You see what I'm right. saying? I watched the YouTube videos and now that stuff just comes out, but in my own voice, with my own perspective. So that's how right. I get my content. And I, I, I want to... If <laughs> I, I, I was to just saying I took my notes, Walter. I I, I just nah, want you, that to be clear. You good? You good? <laughs> not nah, because I think I, I want everybody. Let, let's pull a clubhouse and say let's reset the room because because again, um, I I know I don't know what people's expectations were when they came on the stream, but I mean we're we're, we're talking about all things live streaming. Just this is more the context and the content portion before you know. But we'll have to do a part two or something else to actually get into cameras and all of that. But um, but one of the things that we've said repeatedly tonight is talking about audience. And, and this is more getting in um, to me and Jermaine's world, but to, to Alicio's and Charles's point, um, because if you are engaged and you pay attention to your audience, it is impossible for you to run out of content. There are Absolutely. a lot of people, there are a lot of people who just make videos, 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 videos. And I see mm. people, they don't spend any time in the comment section. They don't None. spend any time, but they be, but they want to beat the algorithm. So I'm really confused because I'm like, well, the only exactly. way to beat the algorithm is, is to increase your engagement, right? Is to be mm. in the comments. And so one mm. of the things I want to say is in this branding conversation, again, this is one of my Martin Luther King moments um, where I'm always yelling. Where it's like, you know, because we always we've had this conversation about branding, we've had this conversation about marketing. And the reason I want to bring this into live streaming real quick, in the same way that Charles just gave you the game, a lot of y'all have businesses, a lot of you run ministries, a lot of you run nonprofit organizations, you've written books, whatever it is, and you're trying to figure out how to add live streaming as a tool or how to add video production as a tool to really take those things to another level and introduce you, you know, grow your audience, as Alicia was talking about. There's one thing key. I want you to understand that we've been saying um, tonight um, it, you have to do this based on your audience, your niche. You won't determine that your audience will determine what your niche is because they will define what they need. They will tell mm -hmm. you this is what I need. I know mm -hmm. your favorite color is yellow, but mm -hmm. I you, nobody cares about that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's a hard conversation for people to have. Um, because everybody gets stuck on the visual, but it's like when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to your niche, 
get in the comments and when you and like you said every single comment is the potential for another video or for another you know for for another piece of content and one of the mm -hmm. one of the content models that i love is gary v's content model which is a macro to micro strategy and so basically mm -hmm. You take a long form piece of content. So whatever you love talking about, especially if you're if you if you are in ministry, if you are a pastor, you can take Sunday morning and break it up into 52 weeks for, you know, for some for some of us. You know what I'm saying? But wow. it's like that macro, a big piece of content. And mm -hmm. then you say, OK, I'm going to let the audience dictate because they, they might not sit here and watch the whole hour. But they, there may be this piece, this 15 second bite, this 60 second bite, this 30 second bite, this minute bite, this 15 minute section. Well, what does that sound familiar to? Well, stories are 15 seconds. Um, mm -hmm. Reels are up to 30 seconds. Um, mm -hmm. A post can be a minute um, unless yeah. you're verified and you got a blue check. IGTV is 15 minutes. So all of these platforms, you know, we talked about cross posting, going back and forth, all of this. Yeah. These platforms are already set up for you to understand, yo make content specific to that platform i can't take a fair a 15 minute video on on youtube and think i'm gonna mm -hmm. throw that on instagram and think i'm gonna get the same thing but what happens is if i think in terms of my audience that's on that platform i'm like yo when i'm looking at the comments and on youtube somebody's like yo out of these 15 minutes i really only cared about one minute and 23 seconds well i'm gonna mm -hmm. address that there's my next piece of content if it's hot i was like okay well if you have that question Maybe somebody else has that question. Let me go to Facebook. Let me go to the IG. Let me share that as a hot take. And that's how you keep things going because people are like, yo, I don't know where I'm going to get my next piece of content from. Your audience is going to dictate that. But as you're building out your brand and as you're building out marketing, there's one thing I want you to understand. You, how you feel about yourself, that's marketing. This live stream, the overlays, the name, the color, that's a suit, it's a tie, mm -hmm. it's your shirt, it's your shoes, it's did you brush your teeth, that's all of that stuff. It's, it, it's cool, it catches the attention, it got you here. But the branding, what you care about, what your need is, that's what's gonna keep you here. That's what. That's how people feel about you. That's what they're gonna say about you when you're not in the room. That's what people are gonna say about us when they when we get off of this stream, what people say behind our backs and what they don't say on this stream, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, that is branding. And so in you trying to understand your audience, when you're trying to really dig into your niche and you're trying to figure out what is the next piece of content that I need to create, let your audience, that's how you poll. You let them dictate it. if you you can literally ask them or you can actually listen. The Bible says mm -hmm. be slow to speak and quick right. to listen. So mm -hmm. before you make your next piece of content, go back and listen to the it. last piece of content and be like, <laughs> let me listen to my audience. I know y'all like the, I know I'm talking all the time, but let me actually listen to you, hear what you got to say. And then it's like, hmm, well, such and such has a need over here. Such and such has a need over here. And I'm like, man, there go 20 more videos right there. So I'm like, well, let's put it on the list and check it off as you go. So if, if you're really dialed in to your audience, again, a lot of us talk because we like hearing ourselves talk. A lot of us want to go live because we want to play with toy. And, and there's nothing against that. If you want to play, then, then we got jokers for that. But this is called Stream Kings for a reason because we ain't got time to play. You know what I'm saying? If, if that's what you want to do, jokers for that. <laughs> if that's what you want to do, do that. But for my it. kings and queens that you out here, you know, you really try, you trying to go from a jack to a king and a queen. We really trying to make sure, hey, pay attention. Get in them comments. Get right. in, get in the weeds. Get, I don't care what else you hit. Get in the comments and stop doing Joking. stuff because you like it. I got a new right. camera. I want to show y'all what it is. Nobody cares, man. Somebody over here right. asking you. How, how do I do this? Pay attention to that. Stop looking at all this wow. other crazy stuff. All right, let me go back in my corner. I'm sorry. Y'all hey, yeah, go ahead, Jermaine. I know you're talking about that. I know y'all saw my say, overlay well, move. Oh. <laughs> I know y'all oh, saw my overlay, my overlay move, Lim Dog. Tell me, lock that overlay, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, but you said you said something that was very important, and I think it goes back to even what we were talking about earlier. Uh, when you were talking about your audience uh, defining your niche. What happens a lot of times also is you got to know who you are, right? You can't just uh, feel sure, like you sure. and, and kind of reach every audience. You know, I always talk about marketing and branding and our bait, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody right. has bait. And there's a there's an ocean that may have this 
thousands of species of different fish in that ocean. And you have a, a bait that's designed to catch a bass, right? And so you may go and cast your, your reel into that actual ocean and you may catch three or four or five different bass, right? But if you go to a pond that's stocked with bass and you throw your bait in there, now your bait becomes more effective. Now you're catching right. 30, 40, 50 fish. And so right. a lot of times we don't do that because we don't know who we are. We don't know what we're, what we're designed, who, uh, our speech, our voice. What is our voice? Uh, what are the things that we're passionate about? What are our gifts? that we have that we can utilize to really create content that is going to really speak to the masses. I wanted to say too, um, it was, who? oh yeah, it was Charles that gave the tip, you know, um, a part of kind of developing your ecosystem and building your audience and really being able to uphold them effectively or just serve them effectively is having building like your platforms, um, and your email list. And one thing that I would say that changed the game for me is Facebook groups, man. I know, Charles, you said that. Yo, Facebook groups is, man, a go. I've started about three or four niche Facebook groups. And um, the way you do it is you, so Facebook is already throwing tons of people into your group. They're already do they're doing that for you because Facebook groups right now, that's what Facebook is focusing on community and groups. So I would I would champion anybody. If you have a YouTube channel, start a Facebook group. I don't care how small you think you are. Mm -hmm. You need to have a Facebook group that directly corresponds with your brand. You know, I have a couple. And what's going to happen is as people traffic comes into your YouTube channel, have your Facebook group in the description. That's going to be traffic, but also make sure you optimize your Facebook group with keywords and things like that, because then you'll start to you'll pop up in the side browser of the Facebook group and they'll start to suggest your group into uh, suggest people into your group. Now, once you get a decent group that is going to be able to, of course, get you into like Amazon influencers. All you need is 500 people in a public group. Don't make your group private. Don't do that but make a public group and man i'm telling you those people in your group if you're really serving them those people in your group it's almost kind of like eating out of your hand <laughs> it's like it's literally like that like some of my groups i literally just go share a amazon affiliate link it's not nothing that i'm trying to get money from them it's something that i found very useful and i'm and i truly believe it's something that could serve them just sharing an Amazon link or just sharing this or sharing that. And you just, they just buy that stuff up, man. Or you come out with a shirt. I think I'm averaging like a thousand dollars a month with my little, the shirt that I bought, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I have a group that just buys it up, you know? So um, definitely I, I love that tip that you said about the group, Charles. I would, I would say anybody, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have a brand, if you have a message right now today, when we get off this live stream, go start your own group and start building your community and that's going to you're going to see it's going to scale over time and it's going to be a game changer for you. Outstanding. Uh, I wrote them notes down myself. I'm like strict. <laughs> I have, yeah, I can show you no cap, bro. I can show you, man. My, my groups are, are it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Lisa, you'll say he got social proof, baby. Yeah, he, he I got receipts. From I got all receipts. He bring it in <laughs> from all angles. You got yeah, to, you man. Got to, and that's something that we'll probably um, get into as we continue to do this show because um, I'm 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 thinking that this is just the first of many, right? Right. Uh, we definitely <laughs> already got comments. People asking when's the next one, so uh, we'll bring it back. But um, we I will make a note to talk about multiple streams of income, passive income. We definitely want to dive into that, especially right now with everything shifting to a digital right e-commerce um grew 34 percent last year and so we got to tap into that so can i can i say something yeah. about passive income and the negative connotation that especially us that we have with passive income we have this hate i won't even say love hate relationship us we have a hate relationship with passive income it's like we see so many people do it successfully you know other uh, ethnicities do it successfully but soon as we say those two words passive income we become crooks we become you know uh you know just like mlm type mindset type people when it's not even that you know what i'm saying like passive income is not a unicorn it's not bigfoot it's not nothing but literally you just setting up your systems and connecting people with services that they already need and right. what, what i what i hate what, what is funny about facebook is 
Everybody comes on Facebook. Pay attention to everybody. I don't care who you who you are. Everybody comes on Facebook and social media. And guess what? They're already affiliates. They're just not getting right. paid for it. They come on here. Oh, right. look at the car I just bought. Look at the house mm -hmm. I just bought. Look at the shoes I just bought. They come mm -hmm. on bragging all day. Look at all this stuff I just bought. But they're not positioning the stuff that they're saying. They're not positioning this thing that they're buying in a way that they can, once again, they can cycle it back to them. So if you're already coming on Facebook and social media bragging about all the stuff you bought, bragging about this and that, at least throw somebody a link and say, hey, if you want one too, why don't you go get one? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Ecamm just cut me a $300 check last last week and i had i don't even tell people about ecamm i just people ask me and when they ask me about it i tell them what i'm using and, and yeah. ecamm cut me a 300 hundred dollar check so i can't i can only imagine when i actually start to tell people about ecamm and tell people about restream and tell people about all these other services that i actually use so let's shake this negative connotation about passive income it is real and people are making tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars and all they're doing is telling people what they should get or just linking up the service with the person so that's all i want to say man <laughs> man hey Yo. hey watch that for the replay you got man. to go back to the replay for that he dropped Alicio, some knowledge on you I, we, I need some coaching offline <laughs> no, bro, don't do that. Don't do that, bro. You know I got you, man. But no, I just I'm passionate about that because I see people I'm wasting serious. their time. They're wasting Next. their time, wasting their energy, wasting their life force, and and they're not channeling it in the right way. So let's get let's shake this mind mindset of if I tell somebody something or passive income is not real. Passive mm -hmm. income is so in the last two years, I, I won't say I truly live totally live off of passive income, but I I can truly say half of my income is passive income now. And and and, wow. and it was just all me making a mindset shift, you know, a mindset shift to be like, hey, let me just if I'm going to be out here talking and be on this social media, how can these platforms pay me for just doing just being me? And, and it's so true. Right. It, it can happen. That's good, man. So to kind of bring everything and land this plane um, again, Stream Kings, what an amazing collaboration this has already been. Um, I want to kind of go around the horn here. We've had a lot of questions, some amazing comments. People have been rapping and running with y'all all night. I want you guys to kind of, based on what we've talked about, what we shared during this last hour and a half, kind of give your final thoughts, final remarks. One key takeaway from, for you to those who have been listening as we prepare to kind of end this conversation. And I'll start like we started with you, Jermaine. All right. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on this panel um, with these amazing guys, man. It's, it's so much uh, gold nuggets on this. Listen, I encourage you guys to go back and listen and watch the replay. Watch the replay and get, you know, get a notepad and write all of this stuff down and then put it in order. Create strategy from what you've heard. Don't just, you know, I'm all about application. Don't just listen to it. You know, as a pastor, mm -hmm. I tell my congregation, don't just listen to the message. No, I want you to apply it to your life. And so mm -hmm. even in the situation, apply what you're what you're hearing tonight. I mean, wow. the gold that's dropped on this is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, people pay. I, I was just in a mastermind last year and I, it was a 10K mastermind that I paid for uh, to, you know, build our business to seven figures or what have you. And so people are paying thousands and thousands of dollars for a lot of the knowledge that we dropped on here tonight. And so take advantage of that. Um, and my, my main takeaway would be uh, that I would like for everybody to really have is really be you and be you uniquely you, right? You have a voice, you have something to share. I don't care how, how small or insignificant you think it is, it's not. There's somebody out there and watch this. When you don't uh, operate in your purpose, it could be the very detriment to someone else. And so make sure that you're operating with your gifts and you're giving your voice. Somebody wants to hear your voice. Again, your voice is assigned to someone out there and they need mm. to hear your story. Stories sell, facts tell. So you want to make sure mm. that you understand what you are sharing with your audience. Wow. Appreciate you, man. Man, that's good stuff. Yes, sir. DJ, what you got for us? So, so let me say this. I, um, Man, I had a long day today, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. 
Like, I, I really, like, had a long day. I even thought about, man, let me just call in and say, hey, let me just catch y'all on the next one. That was, like, my feelings and my sentiment uh, about, because uh, my day was so long, and I still got work to do tonight um, based wow, on geez. everything that I have going on. Like, it's just part of it. Like, if you really want to be successful, you got to go yeah. get it. It's going to be some days that you don't feel like editing videos. It's going to be some days that don't go right. It's going to be some days where your spouse, you know, y'all ain't clicking on all cylinders. Uh, And and you have to be able to get through those tough days. And those days that are hard are Mm. the ones that really help you decide who you are or tells you who you define. That's the word. It defines who you are. Are how you able mm. to make it through those rough days? And I got to say this, guys, this being on the stream with you tonight has helped me give me some extra energy. You know, yeah. uh, a lot of things that we've said, of course, all of us know a lot of these tips, but to hear it from the next person uh, and how they've been able to use it, it really helps. I did take some notes and uh, like from everybody, I took notes from everybody. So I'm very <laughs> thankful that you guys will allow me to uh, kind of hang out with you tonight. Uh, it means a lot to me. And if I can ever do anything to help anybody on this panel, anybody that's watching, you know, uh, God has put me in a place right now that, you know, I'm just thankful to be at a place where I can help Amen. people learn some simple tools. And it's not about me, but I really give him the honor for it. So um, wow. thanks again to you guys. And uh, again, if there's anything I could do to help, call you boy strict. Hey, there we go. Oh, so Jermaine and then DJ Strick, how can folks connect with y'all? I mean, I know they can follow the the chat and feed and all that, but if you want to drop a social or website, go ahead. Sure. Um, My website is JermaineFreeman.com. You can also reach me on social media at Jermaine Freeman on all the social media platforms. Appreciate you. And and Strick? So it's real simple. It's either at or... um... I want to say pound because I'm so old. <laughs> but Strict City, man, if you Google at Strict City, you got me. All right. Good deal. My man, Walt. What's up, brother? Talk to us. Uh, in a world of Whoppers, what makes you a Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's mantra. In a world of Whoppers, what makes you a Big Mac? Every every everybody sell burgers, but what makes you different? Mm-hmm. What's literally what is your special sauce? What is your secret sauce? What is it that makes you different? Um, I think the biggest thing, uh, other than collaboration, is just authenticity. We're living in a world right now gotcha. where everybody is trying to be like the next person, and people are afraid of being themselves. You know, and um, and it's it's, it's really a slap. You know, because to Alicio's point, when he said, you know, at the beginning of the stream, having to repent is like it's a slap in God's face. You know, when he would take mm-hmm. the time that he'd take fearfully and wonderfully make you. Come on, like, come on, oh, come on, oh, come on. I, I don't want to be that. It's like, mm-hmm. have you lost your mind? But everything <laughs> that you're praying for yes. is attached to how I made you. So mm-hmm. wow. you're struggling trying to figure out why am I not getting the success that I want? Right. It's because you're not being yourself and you're right. quirky. Wow. I am the way I am. I wear these headphones. I wear my hat backwards. I'm loud. I'm crazy because for the longest time, I didn't see anybody like me doing what I did. And so I was like, Mm. I got to fit into this mold or in this box. And I didn't feel comfortable. I wasn't experiencing the success. And then I understood I I didn't have a reference point. So I had to be the reference point. Mm -hmm. So come on, brother. Me being myself. Wow. That's when the success came. So the one thing I leave y'all with is in a world of whoppers, what mm. make I don't care if you don't like McDonald's or not, but you you can't argue with the success of the Big yeah, Mac. Right. Yeah, so in yeah. a world of whoppers, in a world of Dave singles, in yeah. a world of cookout double burgers, in and out, wherever y'all eating at, <laughs> what makes you a Big Mac? And 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 good night, because like I said, I, we we got work to do still. The light streaks. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what I would say, what I would leave people with, and um, kind of going going back to what Walt was saying when I said, you know, I had to repent. You know, we have to truly understand 
the time that we're living in. You know, and the Bible talks about the people who really succeeded in, in the Bible. They were they understood the time. You know what I'm saying? It just right. literally they understood the time. They understood how to seize the moment. You know what I'm saying? The seasons that they were in. Let's take a second to think about the season that we are in. It's 2021. Right. OK. And I want you to think about the opportunity that we have and I'm going to get up to live streaming. But the Internet has only been popular for about 20 years. Can we be honest with ourselves? All right. Exactly. So if, if if the world has been around for 2021 years, but we know that it's been around longer than that. But we'll say 2021 years. The Internet has only been popping for 20 years of that. So, so does that make your head explode? Like, hold on. If, if I, if I, there are people, there are going to be people in a hundred years that wish they were alive right now. Right. Man. They're going to say, man, they're going to say, man, I wish I was alive in 2021 because the right. ground is so fertile. The ground is so fruitful right now. All you have to do is tap into your God given intellect, your God given genius. Right. And you can make, so, I mean, there's so many people right now, Mark Zuckerberg and the Amazon guy, these guys understood. They understood like, hold on now, people are sleeping on this, but I'm not going to sleep on this. And they looked crazy for a while. They look crazy for 10 years, 20, 15 years, but the last five or 10 years, they don't look so crazy. They're billionaires. So I, right. I just said, I, I said all that to say this, the playing field is even, <laughs> you know, there was a time when the playing field wasn't even, there was right. a time, when, there was a time when people did have one up on you, but people right. do not have one up on you no more. The internet live streaming, video content creation, your message, your genius, your intellect, all that has the absolute same power and ability to get out to the masses just like the billionaires have that opportunity so are you going to step into your calling step into like your your stroke of genius and, and figure that out and get out in front of the people because the people who make it now and the people who don't make it are the people who grab the bull by the horns right mm -hmm. and they ride that way they they ride that that bull man like it's going to be rough it's going to be turbulent but if you grab them horns and you ride that bull i guarantee you in 2030 right 2030 about nine years, not even that long, but I'm just saying, are you going to look back at this decade and be like, man, in 2021, I had the opportunity, but I slept on myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want nobody to sleep on themselves. Mm -hmm. I, and uh, another thing I want to leave you with real quick is don't pay attention to what other people are doing more than you're paying attention to what you're doing. OK, there's on, a thing dude. called. Hey, come on, man. There's, a, there, there's a thing called legitimate distractions. Now, these distractions, mm -hmm. they're legitimate. That don't mean that they, they're not real. That don't mean that they're, they're not uh, impactful. They're they're actually there, but they're legitimate distractions. You have to still turn a blind eye and a blind ear to everything that's going on behind you. You have to put your head down, literally put your head. I tell my friends all the time. They, they complain to me, at least I don't like this. I don't like that. I said, I don't you know what I tell them. I say, put your head down <laughs> and get to work until when you, pick your, when you pick your head back up and you look around, your whole life look different. And if, mm. and if you pick your, if you pick your head back up and you look around and your life look the same, put your head back down yeah. and you get mm. back to work and you get mm. back to you put your hand to the plow. You put your hand to the plow and you peek back up. OK, it still look the same. I'm going to get back to work. Now, yeah. the only Come time on. you put your head back up and you start like chilling is when. Oh, who is that guy? I don't know him. Oh, who is that? I don't know. I don't recognize that house I just bought. I don't recognize that car I just bought. I don't recognize these millionaire friends I got. Oh, now I can, now I can chill now. You know what I'm saying? Or, or keep going to work. So I'm just saying, like, put yeah. your head down. Go to work. We all have a, a immaculate opportunity right now. And I'm just so passionate about it because, like, right now, future billionaires are being groomed right now. Right, right, right now. now. Right. Look right. what happened in the financial industry just last week. Yeah. <laughs> Look right. what happened. Right. Like, nothing, nothing like this has ever happened in history. If you would have put a thousand dollars into the stock market two weeks ago, you would have mm -hmm. just made twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> like it's crazy. So, like, don't have that victim mentality. Don't have all these excuses. Just get to work, dig deep, and, and go for it. That's all I gotta say. Kings don't oh, that's complain. all I have to say. That's all I, I have to say. <laughs> Man, stop it. That's that's all I have to say. <laughs> my bad, brother. My bad. Hey, say, hey man. Bro, you, somebody you stop the fight, bro. Right. Hey, he done he done talked about the men of Issachar. Like, like most people don't even know about them in the Bible, first of all. Right. So when he went, I right. was like, 
Oh, right. Hey, the, the, being a I, my, who my, my bishop, the my, my bishop does an Issachar conference every year, so we we understand the times. We understand. Sure. Like, hey, we, we call ourselves the timekeepers because we our job is to understand the times because that tells you everything you need to know. That's real. That's for sure. Look, this is what I'm gonna say, man. I have enjoyed this time with you guys. The one thing that kept jumping out at me the whole time, and we've been on this segment. Um, everything to me came to came came back to belief, right? And I'll say this, what you believe in will be the driving force behind the opportunities you pursue, the relationships you build, and the life you create. What you believe about yourself, what you believe about the God who's created you, what you believe about your purpose, what you believe about your abilities, it's going to be the driving force behind the life that you create, hands down. Everything that these gentlemen said comes back to what it is that you're placing your belief and your trust in. And so I want you guys to go follow these gentlemen, go back to this replay Take our advice and look at the comments and questions, especially if you're a content creator and see what folks are interested in. There's a lot of exactly. like 30 second, two minute videos right there that can be created just from this chat. And guys, we definitely have to do this again. So hey, absolutely. Man. Yeah, go ahead. Pastors, CEOs, Hey, stream kings c- coming to a <laughs> to a to a to a city near you. Near you. <laughs> we got some work to do with branding and and, and <laughs> publicizing, right? <laughs> no, listen. You can watch y'all. You can share this video with anybody you know in any industry tonight, and I guarantee you, they're gonna be a different person after they watch it. Because yeah. I'm a different True. person, wow. and I was on the stream. Yeah. Me too. Right. And I've paid for this type of content, right? Right. I'm a different person and I'm sitting here like, boy, you know, at least yo, I owe you like a thousand dollars. Like, what's your nah. cash out? What you like? charging out? Nah, what you that. charging out? Nah. Walt, they say, Walt, you, Walt, you didn't let us know how to connect with you, brother. Social websites and then something. I don't even know. <laughs> um, um fine my name is walter w-a-l-t-e-r <laughs> last name Jeanette. j-e-n-n-e-t-t-e nah on all my social media handles is walt without the er um Jeanette. and um f- holla at me on youtube so we can engage so we can get in the comments you know what i'm saying literally that's what that's why that's why i've been pushing everybody to just oh i'm over on the tube that's what i'm spending most of my time and uh because i don't want to talk you know, and if y'all want to talk offline, then you hit me up on the other channels. But yeah, I want to talk right there. But yeah, man, listen, come into a, a phone, TV, iPad, wherever. Just the beginning. Holla. This is just the Woo! beginning. Alicia, how do you connect with you, bro? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm everywhere online at aliciaway.com. Um, yeah, just just my name. You know, um, that's where I keep it. And yeah, it, it is time to invest. You know, I was I was trying. I'm trying to learn Facebook ads and Google ads. And you know, me and my family, we just dropped eleven thousand dollars on a course to learn that stuff. So you know, when when uh, whenever I learn something, I, I like to give it freely because I know it, it'll come back right. So anything I know or anything I learn, man, just hit me up. I'm I'm more than willing to share the knowledge, man. That's all. Absolutely. And, and that's the truth. He uh, will share it. Yes, yeah, sir. He's look, done tremendous to take my stream and my broadcast to the next level. So for next to nothing, again, the power of collaboration, man, when God brings people into your life. Uh, I'm online at Charles Jack- Jackson Media. You can connect with me there. Website, www.charlesjackson.media. And I uh, love to continue to engage. But look, this is just the first of many. So, gentlemen, I'm going to let you go. DJ Strip, we're going to let you get back to work. I'm going to get back to recovering, and we will chat and wrap offline, fellas. Thank you so much. You all have a great night, and we'll see you. God bless you. God bless you all. Peace. Peace.